Rhonda and I'm also known as the sparkly one. Today I'm going to show you how to make these knitted beginner fingerless gloves. The average glove that I've been making is about six inches from top to bottom. So it goes like this. So it's about six inches right there. And when you are making your rib knit stitch, this is the bottom right here. This uh, portion right here is about two inches. And then you have from two to five inches for the stocking knit stitch, which goes like that. And then about an inch for the top portion. And then also to show you, this is the opening for the thumb. And that is anywhere from one and three quarter inches to two inches. So depending on how tight you want that thumb, I would say one and three quarters is probably gonna be your average. Um, for a larger hand, you're gonna wanna do a two inch opening. And I do have large hands and this opening is about two inches, but it could be a little bit smaller. If I were to tighten it up, it'd be about one and three quarters. So definitely use one and three quarter to two inches depending on your hand size. I just wanted to show you this um, little knit kit. Do you see where it says the knit kit? Um, one of my friends gave this to me and it comes in so handy when you're trying to practice and you're doing rows. And it has this little counter right here which you can turn and click. So it, like that, you just keep clicking and it changes up to 99 rows. And then if you wanna just reset it, you just dial that back and you can put it to zero like that and then this one over here and this has been so great when I've been trying to do some other patterns and keep track of my work but this has so many different things it has this little um, crochet hook that you can take off right here so you can use that for uh, weaving in your ends or whatever you have you can put that back in there it has a little uh, slicing tool right there so if you wanna cut your ends, you could use that. And then it has this tape measure right here, which I love. And you can just put it back in there. And then on the back, it has this little compartment which you open up. And then it has a pair of scissors, some um, stoppers for the ends of your needles, and then these little um, markers. And they're called stitch markers. And that is just so cute, I love this. And then I'm gonna insert here where I did um, some fingerless gloves, my very first pair, which I gave to my aunt. And I'll show you those right here. Look how pretty they are. So that was called a diamond brocade stitch. And it's probably a little more complicated, but you definitely need that little knit kit to keep track of your um, rows. So that came in handy for that. I am new to knitting, and so this is just something I've come up with. Uh, I don't know if there's another pattern like it on YouTube, but there probably is. But I really like this, and it was a good practice piece for me. And so all you're going to do is you're going to do the knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two ribbing. Then you're just gonna do the stocking net stitch, and then you're gonna do, again, the rib uh, up at the top. So all I did was sew it up the side, and so there's a thumb hole right there. And you just slip it over your hand. I just thought it was really nice and simple. If you're a beginner, this is great. You don't have to make any sort of a, a thumb uh, area right here. Look how cute those are. I just, I really love it. And I'm very, very pleased with how it turned out. It's very easy and these make great gifts. So if you know anyone who likes to wear fingerless gloves, this is a great gift for them. For this pattern, I'm using a size six um, double pointed knitting needle. Now, if you're new to knitting like I am, there's these little rubber stopper things and um, they actually work really nice so you're uh, cro I mean, so your knitting doesn't fall off the end of your needle. And I got this at Hobby Lobby, and the color is Pinkaboo Marled. And it made the best gloves. I'm so thrilled with that. So you're going to need um, just one skein. And, you and so to measure how many stitches you need, which we need 26 for this, you're just going to wrap 26 times. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll come right back and then I'll show you how we're, and then you just take it off. 
And then that's how long your tail should be when you start to cast on your stitches. And the way that I am casting on is that I'm going to make my slip stitch with my yarn like that and just tighten it up. And then this is the method that I'm using where I'm yarning over. I don't even know what it's called. That's how new of a knitter I'm at, I am. <laughs> but I'm just yarning over and putting it through like this. And just Don't make it too tight, leave it nice and loose so that you can get your your uh, needle in there. I keep wanting to say hook because I'm a crocheter <laughs> and so knitting is a little bit foreign to me, but I am really loving how to do this. It's just so fun and I love the way knitting looks. I've always loved it, even more so than crochet but I never really took the time to learn. So thank you, YouTube, and all the people out there who have helped us learn all of these amazing techniques. So you're just gonna cast on 26, and this is for someone with a large hand like myself, but if you have a smaller hand, you're gonna wanna do uh, probably 24 stitches, okay? Or if you need to use a thinner yarn, you're gonna wanna use um, a at the same size needle but you're going to want to cast on more stitches so if you have a thinner like say a worsted weight yarn you might need about 28 or 30 stitches so it just depends and you're just going to have to learn to uh, play with that but once you get one that's somewhat finished like this one this is one that i finished um i still have to sign up uh, sign up i still have to sew up the sides but this is what it's gonna look like, so you're just working with it flat. And so what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that this piece, let me take my glove off, uh, will fit around your hand. So you're gonna lay your hand on the glove, and this is the inside, by the way. And you're gonna wanna put it where the ribbing is around your wrist, like that, just to make sure it's gonna fit over your hand. If not, you're gonna have to make more um, stitches. So this I did with the worsted weight yarn. This also has 26 stitches, but I did this with a little bit bigger. I think this was a size seven knitting needle. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew up the sides to right here, and then you're gonna leave that opening, and then you're gonna sew down, and then you'll be finished. But I'll show you that at the end of the video. Okay, and like I said, <laughs> I am just a brand new knitter, so I've been knitting for two months. I think that's about it. But I've made quite a few beginner projects and I've been really, really loving it. So I'll show you a few of the beginner projects that I've done right here so you can see um, what I've done. But uh, it's just great practice to keep on making um, little things. It kind of teaches you that muscle memory, which is what we really need, especially if we're switching from crochet to knitting. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna do a rib stitch, okay? So that rib stitch is right here. And so that allows it to stretch around your hand. So we're gonna be making this, and then we'll move on to the stockinette stitch. So you're gonna do this for 10 rows, and then what you're gonna do, if you're a beginner, now of course you probably won't be watching these videos if you're advanced, so I'm assuming that most people are gonna be beginners. And then you're just gonna insert your needle from the front to the back. So you're just gonna end up right there underneath that needle. And then I'm gonna be doing mine with my the long tail in my right hand and I'm just going to be switching. So I'm just yarning over and I'm bringing it between the two needles and I'm pushing with my finger to get it to come back out and then I'm just going to push it off and that's one knit stitch. Then I'm going to go under here again and put this to the back, push it through. Don't use your little tail but use your long piece of yarn and you're going to wrap it around. You're going to pull it just a little bit so it 
stays really snug inside of those needles so it doesn't slip out. And then you kind of just push it up against the other needle and you bring it out. And then you can just pull up a little bit on that and slide it off. Now on this very first stitch, it does become kind of loose right here. So you just have to tighten it down a little bit and then you'll be good to go. Now we're gonna do a purl stitch and that means you're gonna have to bring your yarn around in between the two needles to the front. You're gonna hold it down. Then you're going to take your right needle and you're gonna push it through that loop right there and you're gonna to go to the left. So it's pointing to the left. Then you're gonna take your yarn and you're gonna wrap it around, bring it down. And I like to, you can hold your needles like this, or if you're one of these, you can do that and hold it like this. Whatever's comfortable for you, you just have to figure that out. And I'm still trying to figure it out. So don't really follow what I do, but I'm just kind of giving you a, a little bit of a, a guideline because I'm no expert that's for sure and then after you've wrapped it around you're just gonna push it through kind of scrape against that other needle so it's not gonna go anywhere push it through and then use your finger and just push it off to slide and you can tighten that down just a little bit you're gonna do two of those so you're gonna push it in there and where this little pearl bump is you're just gonna go right underneath that at the top. Yarn over, pull it, push it, scrape against that needle so it comes out the back and just go up like this and slide it off. Sometimes you get these little snags of yarn which is what I get a lot of those and I guess it will come with experience after a while that we won't have that but and then you're just going to wrap it to the back and you're going to do two knit stitches so you're going to go around and down push it through scrape against that needle push it off you're going to do two of those under there wrap it around scrape against the needle bring it up push it off then you're going to do the two pearls bring it over go underneath where that pearl bump is and then push it through, wrap it around. So you're gonna go right to left and around. Scrape against that knitting needle, slide it up a little bit and push it off. So do I do two of those? Do two of those. And then when you are all the way to the end, you're going to turn it and continue doing um, that same technique. So I'm gonna go to the end and then I'll come back and I'll show you what we're gonna do. I'm at the end of my row and I just turned my needle around. And so what I'm gonna do is just go through and just pull these down a little bit just to make them somewhat even. And that's what that looks like. So I'm not sure the length of this needle. I think it's about seven or eight inches wide. I don't have a tape measure right next to me, but I can let you know. Um, anyway, these are double pointed uh, knitting needles. So what you're going to do is you're at the end. So when you turn it to start this new side, wherever these little bumps are, these are little purl bumps. So we know we, we did a purl stitch for two stitches. Um, but on the other side, of course, on the other side, this is a knit stitch. So the knit stitch is on the front. The purl stitch is on the back. So wherever you see a purl, you're gonna purl, and where you see a knit, you're gonna knit. So this is gonna be a purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. And then when you switch, switch it over, when you flip it over, then it's gonna revert back to the knit stitch. So you're always gonna be starting, it's like every other row with a purl or a knit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Uh, and what you're gonna do is you're going to do this for 10 rows. And then when you get to the 10th row, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna do for the stocking knit stitch. So I love this because it combines a couple different stitches um, and it's just so beautiful. I love the look of a stocking knit and the garter stitch is beautiful as well. 
Before we move on to do our rows, I just want to show you that I actually did this on purpose, but it's happened so many times to me where I've lost count and I've actually made um, the stitches on the wrong side. So as you can see here, these are knit stitches, but I did a purl stitch on both of those. And then this is a purl stitch and I did a knit stitch. So you need to look at this and see, like I can pull it down and do you see this ridge right here? That's a purl stitch, but these under here are knit stitches. So I need to take those out. I did this one right, these two. So I did the two knit, two purl, two knit, but then I did two more knits right here. So I have four knits in a row and then two purls, which those should be knits and these should be purls. So hopefully you understand that. And let me just show you how to take those out in case you've made a mistake. What you're gonna do is you're going to, cause we've been using this strand over here on the right side, but we're gonna switch over. I guess it's continental if you put it on the left side. I'm not really sure cause I'm not that experienced, but I'm gonna wrap this around twice. And then what that allows is some tension right here to pull up the stitches and I can see this little hole right here. I'm going to take my left needle and I'm going to go into that and I'm going to push up my yarn and let it fall off the end of the needle. And then I can pull up my strand and I see this is another purl, which I have to take off. So I'm going to do that same thing. So I'm just going to put this to the back, tension that up a little bit, open up that stitch slide it off and then hold on to everything because it can slide off pretty easily and then i'm just going to put it to the back and then these two should be purl stitches and these are actually knit stitches so can you see the knits right here there should always be if you're doing a purl it should have a little purl bump right underneath here and it doesn't so that is the knit stitch so I'm going to do this again. I'm just going to insert my hook into that hole where the yarn's coming out. And then I'm just going to push that off. And then I'm going to pull out the yarn and uh, I'm losing my needles. Put it back to the back, the yarn, and then take off the next one. So I did all of those wrong. So I'm trying to fix my mistake. And then as you can see, I'm back to the proper way to get my stitches um, finished. So I have the little purl bumps right there. So I know that's a purl stitch. So now I'm gonna switch back, bring it to the front, and then now I can go ahead and finish the proper way. So without taking all of your work out, you can just go back and switch um, the, the, take out the yarn and fix your mistake. So I'm on row nine, so I need 10 rows, and then I'll be back and I'll show you the stocking knit stitch. Stocking knit, that's how you say it. Stocking knit, <laughs> I think. Knit stitch, stocking knit. We'll be back in a second. I finished 10 rows of ribbing, and the way that I am counting these is I am counting the Vs, these little Vs right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and there's one right here, 10. So those are my 10 rows, and you can make this as long as you want. It's just gonna go right here at your wrist. So when you, um, you can have it you know, longer or you can have it shorter, whatever you prefer. So I'm just showing you the basic pattern that I've created, but that is 10 rows. If, the, if you finished and yours are pearls here, and these are knits, uh, because it might be that you have um, ended on the other side with maybe nine rows or seven rows or whatever. Just go ahead and start with the stocking knit stitch, the knit stitch. Um, it doesn't matter which um, one you ended with. And I'm just gonna do this in the other style. I think this is continental, but since this is a knit stitch, it's faster for me to do a knit stitch this way versus the way I've been showing you, switching back and forth. This is faster. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna insert your hook, even if you have um, pearls, everything in this row is gonna be a knit stitch. So you're just gonna yarn over 
and slip off. And you're gonna go in this way. So when you're entering into the stitch, if you're a beginner, you're just gonna, from the bottom to the top, and then you go, go behind the needles, yarn over, pull through and scrape up on that needle right here so it doesn't slip off and then just slide it off. Again, you're gonna go underneath to the back, yarn over, pull through, push up these needles together and slide off. So you're just gonna do that all the way across and then when you reverse onto the other side, you'll see all the purl bumps on the back and you're gonna do the back side with a, a purl stitch. So go ahead and go all the way across with your knit stitch. And then when we get to the end, we'll flip over and I'll show you the back. I breached across to the end. And again, this is all knit all the way across. Now you just turn it over and then on the back you'll see these purl bumps all the way across. So what you're going to do on this side is you're going to do all purl stitches and that means for me I am switching hands and I'm going to be using the yarn in my right hand. But there's a lot of videos on YouTube so you can try to figure out the best technique for you but this one works the best for me so far. Hopefully I will be learning some new ways to hold my yarn. I'm just gonna keep watching all those videos and see what, which one I like the best. But for now, this one seems to work fine for me. So you're just gonna go in the back and do purling all the way across. Now you're just gonna keep alternating knits and purls for each row until you reach the length that you want. So let me just show you, let me put my needles down. And this is gonna make this really beautiful stocking knit stitch. And I love that stitch. So let me show you, here it is. So this is what I'm making right now. And this is the flat version of a different color. I used a size seven needle for this with a four worsted weight yarn. And it's just a little bit looser. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this in half and then I'm gonna sew up the edge, but I'm gonna leave a thumb hole area. And I'll show you that on the pink one when I'm done. But what you're gonna need to do is put this on your arm, if this is for you or on your hand, and then Wherever this is going to lay on your hand, you're just going to hold your thumb down there. You're going to bring this end around and just kind of pinch it there and hold it. And then this part right here, let's see. Okay, you're going to measure it like that. So you need to have this rib knit right up to the base of your knuckles underneath. I mean, you can make this longer if you want. And you know you can make this section in the middle longer, but whatever you do, just make sure that you just keep it consistent with the other one and write down your pattern because I'll give you a pattern, but yours, you might have more stitches here or less. But the pattern that I'm showing you is what I'm using. And so what you're gonna have is you're gonna have, this is the garter stitch, and you can actually use it on this side if you want. If you like the way a garter stitch looks, this is totally reversible. So you can do whichever you want. But even if you sew it up on the side here, you can just turn it inside out and you can have a reversible glove. So I think that's what's really nice about this. I've done, I think it's 17 rows, but I measured it on my hand like this. So I just wanted it to go up to the bottom of my knuckles right here, and then I'm gonna add the rest of the ribbing. So you can count those, make sure you keep a, a total of how many that you have on your hook so that when you do the second piece, it's exactly the same length. And then for this, all you're gonna do is you're gonna, going to um, just do your ribbing again. So you're just gonna do the knit two, purl two. So I'm purling two. And then, you're gonna do four or five rows of the ribbing up on the top. So just continue that. So I finished 
this part of the glove. So this is the flat piece and this is the back side. This is the front side. And I just wanted to show you how to cast off. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can cast off. You can look those up online, of course, on YouTube. And what I'm going to do are these are the on the back side. So these are purl stitches. And as you can tell, these are knit stitches. So wherever you did a purl, you're going to insert your hook because we started with the purl. And then I'm going to purl this first one. And then I'm going to purl the second one. So you're doing two purls. And then you take your yarn and put it to the back. And then you're going to take, you're going to hold that down. You're going to insert your left needle underneath that first um, stitch. And you're going to pull it over and slip that through like that with that one underneath. And that is a cast off. And right here, you can see that these are knit stitches. So I'm going to have my strand to the back to do as if to knit. So I'm going to knit this stitch. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I just did with the casting off. So I'm going to take my left needle, go underneath that stitch, pull it over that next stitch. Oops, my yarn's separating. And pull it off. So now I've done two or actually it's three so I did the two purls in one knit and then this is a knit stitch as you can see there's a, those are knits and those are purls so I'm going to still do a knit stitch whoops there we go this is what happens so <laughs> just put it back in there quickly um, I'm going to knit this stitch pull it off and you're only going to have two needles. I mean, you're always going to have two stitches on this right needle. And then you're always going to pull this first one off. Snug this one down back there so you don't lose it. And just, you know, see the tension right here? And then just slide it off. And then the next two right here are purl stitches. So I'm going to bring this to the front as if to purl because I'm still purling with the two yarn over and pull it off so I have two again but I'm going to bring it to the back so I can slip it off because that makes it easier at least for me then I'm just going to pull that through and slip it off and these are not very snug I have somewhat loose stitches right here if it's too tight you're never going to be able to pull that over so just keep everything a little looser than you think it should be. And this is still a purl, so I'm gonna purl, slide that off, and I have two purls right there. I'm gonna put it to the back, pull some tension right here, put it underneath this first slip, I mean stitch, and slide that one off after I pull it through. There we go. And then now I have two knit stitches. So you're just doing them one at a time, and just wherever there's a knit, you're gonna knit and pull off and over. And then wherever there's a purl, you're gonna purl. So I have these two. And you're just gonna go all the way across until you have your last stitch on there. And then when you get the last one on, when you get the last stitch, whoops, make sure that your yarn is stable. Pull through. And when you get to the last stitch, then I'll show you how to sew down the side. But that's your finished edge, and look how cute that is. That looks great. So just repeat the video if you can't figure it out, and just kind of watch it a few times, and you'll get the hang of it. And if it's not perfect, that's fine. You're a beginner, so you're allowed. <laughs> and it might feel a little awkward to you. It feels awkward to me because I'm not experienced at this, but... Um, don't give up, just keep doing what's comfortable and I know you can do this. It just takes practice. Okay, and then you put this one to the back. This is the very last one. You're gonna do the same exact thing. Pull it over. Okay. And there is my last 
stitch. So you're gonna wanna leave a long tail. So just go ahead and pull this out until you have enough to where you could sew down the side. So I'm gonna leave it probably about this long. Just make sure you cut the right end, not this long end, but the end that's moving. So just go ahead and snip that off and pull through, just like that. Okay, so here we go with the sewing part. So if you see this one right here, this is the same glove right here. And I'm so proud of myself because they both are exactly the same size. And I know from making crocheted ones that they always turn out two different sizes and that's so frustrating, but it, it does happen. And you're gonna take this with a yarn needle, just like this. And then you're going to, depending on which side you want, because you could do, you know, this is the top side and this is the underneath, whatever you want to do. But I am going to use the, the knit stitch or the stocking knit stitch as the outside. So I'm going to flip this to the inside. And what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to take your yarn needle and you're just going to go under the top two stitches right here somewhere and just pull it through, just to join it like that. And um, you're going to leave an opening right here. So if you take a little tape measure, you're going to have it between one and three quarter inches, which is right there. Let's see if you can see this. So that's one and three quarter inches right there to two inches, somewhere in that range. You're gonna have that big of an opening or a little smaller, depending on the size of your hand. Or if you're gonna make it for somebody with small hands, just make sure it's, you know, a smaller opening. So where you joined that, you're just gonna wanna make sure that it's tight like this, because you don't want a gap in there. So that looks good. And then you're just going to go underneath this next stitch right here. So just find those stitches on the edge. And you're going to do like a whip stitch. So make sure you pull it tight. Like that. You're going to come over here and you're going to go under like two strands like that. And go to the other side and then pull it through and just snug that up. And this should lay pretty flat when you open it up. And then you're just gonna come back on this side and do another stitch and go under here on this side. And then just pull it tight but not too tight, you don't want any holes in there. So just make sure that you um, have it nice and even. Just go underneath the next one, like that. It's, oh, there's my dog barking. Um, and then you're just gonna tighten it up. So it should look like that. Now you're just gonna go a couple stitches past this ribbing stitch, and then um, you're gonna start working on the thumb hole. So let me show you that. So I have one right here. And then, you know, the first one is always like your trial one, and then the second one you can just copy. So if you look at this, this is where I did this one. So I am going to show you with this blue pair right here. I've done the stitch down the side, and then I'm just gonna try that on. So go ahead and try on your glove. And then you're gonna know right here, you can put a stitch marker or um, you know, a crochet hook or whatever you have available, a, a needle, a pin, whatever you have, so you can decide how much of your thumb you want to hang out. So this is right here. 
I'm just using this as a stitch marker and you're gonna just sew that closed from there down. I think it's pretty close to the same size. And at this point, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into the stitch right here and don't go into the one across. So just tighten this one up like that. Okay, then you're gonna do a little running stitch like you're just going to weave in and out of these stitches, maybe like three or four. Well, actually, you're probably just going to do one at a time. So just go ahead and do it on one side of your glove. Just go in and out right along the edge. And then right here. And you don't have to worry about that other side. You're just working on this side because you want to leave that opening. This is where I'm going to start going back across the thumb or where the thumb is to the other side. And I'm going to attach it like that. And then I'm going to do what I did before and I'm just going to go do that like whip stitch is what I'm calling it across like that. And make sure you do them close together because you don't want holes in this. And if you do it too far apart, then yes, you will have an empty space and a hole. So then you're just going to work down. You leave that opening right there and then just work all the way across. And down to the last stitch. So I have two stitches. Make sure you stay on the edge. Don't go too far in because it'll shorten the glove and make it less, you know, wide. So you're going to go under here. Whoops. To the last stitch. Just like that. And then uh, what you can do is you can tie these together at the bottom with a little knot and then weave in your ends. Okay, so let's turn this right side out. Just ignore those, I'm tucking them in for now. I'm gonna put this on. Whoops, it's hanging out. Just ignore that. Okay, so there's one glove. And it's so cold in here right now, so these are gonna feel so good on my hands. And I'm sure if you're, you're, <laughs> if you're cold too, you're gonna love them. There we go. This one I can, actually, if you look at my gloves, this one's a little bit more snug in, than this one. I think I'm just gonna go in with a piece of yarn and tighten that up just a little bit right here so I can make it a little bit more snug. So anyway, there's my gloves. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me and I'm looking forward to doing more videos. I love you guys. Stay healthy. God bless you.